This is Christina Fiore of MedPage Today. A meta-analysis has linked sugar-sweetened beverages like soda and vitamin water directly to metabolic diseases like diabetes and the metabolic syndrome. For perspective on this study, I spoke with Dr. Larry Cantley of Wake Forest University who wasn't involved with the findings. I think it's very important that we recognize how important this is. Um, folks who are uh, struggling with their weight, for example, have probably already learned some time ago to try to avoid sweetened soft drinks and to try to do calorie neutral or calorie zero type beverages. Um, a lot of decisions uh, have been guided by weight. We now have outcomes data to say that you can actually have a higher risk of get getting diabetes by making these kind of choices. So I think the consumer now is given more information before to say how important it is as an adult, also for those who are adult parents of younger children who are still growing, uh, making the choices of having a sugar sweetened beverage versus a non-sugar sweetened beverage may make a difference in that child or that adolescent's likelihood of developing diabetes, also in a reasonable time frame. Um, as you may know, the, the clinical studies here were done anywhere from five to 20 years duration, and they consistently showed the same increased risk of getting diabetes. Right, now what do you make of this um, relative risk that we saw in this study? It's, it's a 26% increased risk of diabetes for those with the highest consumption versus the lowest. Now, is that as big of a difference as you would expect? That's a good question. Um, perhaps the reverse question is, if you took a group, group of people who are known to be at high risk of diabetes and enacted such things as diet, exercise, and weight loss, what percentage reduction would you see? And we actually can take high-risk people and do reasonable things, such as losing 5 to 10 percent of their body weight, exercising reasonably you know, three to four times per week, uh, being uh, calorie conscious so that they're eating sensibly. And we saw as much as a 57 percent reduction in the actual onset of diabetes. So this population group did not intensify by taking high-risk people. They took all comers uh, a variety of ethnicities and variety of nationalities as well. So you're taking a relatively low risk population in general and just saying what's the difference between low intake of these um, sugar sweetened beverages versus essentially high intake. And the numbers were impressive. Okay. All right, so now, you know, we, we finally have a lot of evidence, you know, against sugar sweetened beverages in terms of all these different outcomes. So when are physicians going to start asking their unhealthy patients about their soda consumption the way they would about, say, smoking or other bad behaviors? That's an excellent question. Uh, you know, how high does this raise our threshold for putting the consumption of these sorts of beverages uh, up there with, say, or smoking reduction or smoking cessation, alcohol intake? Uh, one of the problems, of course, is, is a busy primary care physician uh, has so many other questions they have to deal with, including did you get your flu shot yet this year? Uh, are you up to date with your age-related health screenings, such as colonoscopies at the appropriate ages and stuff? Are you on a birth control pill if you're of reproductive age? So there's just so much business to be transacted at a, at a clinic visit that this could easily be swept under the rug or forgotten. Even a well-intentioned consumer, a patient showing up with that question, might be wise to bring it written or, or on their cell phone as a sort of a little note, oh, well, let's ask my doctor about my intake of soda beverages, or sweetened beverages, I should say. Especially, the, again, I'm thinking here of the mom who may be raising children. She may be as concerned about how she's raising, raising her children in a healthy manner. Cantley added that it would be useful to look at patients with an even higher consumption of sugar-sweetened beverages, say six to eight cans of soda a day, to understand their risk of metabolic disease. For MedPage Today, I'm Christina Fiore.